All right. Thank you, Karen. Uh, so good morning, everyone. My name is Brooke Hall, and I'm a senior policy analyst at the division. Um, this is the second RAC meeting or rural advisory committee meeting uh, for well women care. Um, just a reminder before we get started, um, some meeting etiquette. Uh, please keep yourself on mute unless you are speaking. Um, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand and I will call on you. Um, due to time constraints, I'm going to be foregoing introductions today. So if you do speak, um, please first introduce yourself and the agency or organization you represent um, so that others on the call know who is speaking. Uh, the chat is open and you're welcome to use it. And there will be a time for non RAC members to provide public comment at the end of the meeting. And for our uh, agenda today, um, we have uh, introductions and an, and an overview. Um, we're going to review some of the meeting materials that I provided um, and then review um, two sets of draft rules that I've drafted. Um, there will be a time for feedback and, like I said, public comment and then next steps. Since the last RAC meeting was in November, which was quite a while ago, um, I just wanted to refresh your memory on the purpose of this RAC today. Um, so the purpose of the Rural Advisory Committee meeting is to update our 435 rule, our Well Women rule, um, to align with the most recent recommendations from the um, Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, um, for the coverage of Well Women's uh, Services. Um, HRSA supports guidelines developed by the Women's Pre Preventative Services Initiative, or WPSI. Um, during the last RAC meeting, we reviewed a set of draft rules that included um, the WPSI Well Women chart. Um, at the last RAC, there were some questions about how to code um, some of the services listed on the WPSI chart. And since then, um, WPSI has come out with a coding guide, which I included in today's meeting materials. And um, Jason Saldivar from our division is also joining the RAC in case there are any additional questions about coding. And then after the last RAC meeting, there were some questions about where some of the recommendations in the WPSI chart originated from. So I have included a, a color-coded version of the WPSI chart in the meeting materials, which we'll discuss next. Um, I have also included um, two potential rule sets, one that includes the WPSI chart and all related um, recommendations, and one that limits coverage to just the 13 recommendations that are supported by HRSA, um, which we'll discuss later in the agenda. And just a reminder, um, the underlying legislation for this rule is uh, HB 3391 from the 2017 session, um, which requires health benefit plans to cover well, women's, uh, well women care prescribed by DCPS by rule, um, consistent with guidelines published by uh, the United States Health Resources and Services Administration. And Merlene, I see that you did not receive the meeting materials. Um, Lisa Emerson uh, from the division will be emailing those out to you. If anyone else did not receive the meeting materials, um, please put your name in the chat and we'll be sure that you get them. Any questions before we get started? All right. Um, hearing none, Karen, do you mind pulling up the color-coded um, WPSI chart? Yes. Okay. Uh, did anybody receive the meeting materials? <laughs> I'm seeing a whole bunch did not. <laughs> yeah, so uh, perhaps we should send them back out right. to the Oh, the thank, you, <laughs> thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Okay, Brooke. Um, I'm sorry, which one do we want this one? This is the one, but if you can scroll down to where you see the colors and it's it's very small on my screen. Is there any way to make it bigger? OK, so I'm sorry. Are we looking at the the coding guide? OK, no, we're looking at no. the chart. Sorry, this, this one, the one Correct. that's. Um,
this is probably what you want, right? Correct. And you need it bigger? Yes. Is it is it small on everyone else's screen as well? I see it fine on mine. Okay. All right. Well, as long as other VAC members can see it, that is fine, Karen. Okay. All right, so this is the um, the Women's Preventative Services Initiative uh, Well Women chart. Um, this chart includes um, the 13 HRSA supported Well Women uh, Well Women guidelines, along with recommendations from the um, U.S. Preventative Services Task Force or U.S. PSTF and um, Bright Futures, which uh, I believe is uh, recommendations related to adolescents. Uh, I have color coded the chart um, to more clearly show where each recommendation comes from. And there is a guide at the bottom of the chart, a color coded guide. If you scroll down, Karen. So pink in the chart, um, it represents the uh, WPSI um, recommendations that are supported by HRSA. Um, yellow is a a recommendation from Bright Future, and uh, green is a USPSTF um, recommendation. So as you can see, most of the recommendations in the chart um, actually come from the USPSTF task force. Um, the 13 HRSA supported WPSI um, recommendations, which are color coded in pink, are anxiety screening, um, contraceptive and contraceptive care, interpersonal and domestic violence screening, obesity prevention for midlife women, urinary incontinence screening, HIV risk assessment, HIV screening, STI prevention counseling, breast cancer screening, cervical cancer screening, diabetes screening, breastfeeding counseling services and supplies, and at least one well women preventative visit per year. And I do see a hand up. Amy, do you have a question or comment? Um, I have a comment. So just for context, I'm a, a physician scientist at OHSU, but I'm also on the advisory panel of the WPSI. Um, so I just wanted to clarify a little bit of this framing. Um, there are certainly uh, many of these recommendations that are USPSTF, but there's also overlap with the WPSI, and some of those are either the same or more expansive than the task force recommendation. The um, WPSI recommendation uh, for anxiety screening came out in 2018, and in the last year and a half, the task force also released a recommendation for screening for anxiety. Um, contraception and contraceptive care is unique to WPSI, but HPV, HIV screening, interpersonal violence screening, a number of other ones are also USPSTF. Some of that occurs with Bright Futures as well, and so um, I just wanted, I know that this color coding, I think, is something that you all put out, but I also want to point out the overlap. Um, and there are some here, uh, including breast cancer. I think I know you're just showing pregnancy and postpartum, but if you go up to the general uh, women's health as well, there are a number where there is also overlap. So I just wanted to make sure that we're clear on that. And um, I have some other questions as we get into the language, but wanted to point that out that that those and, and and that these are all covered under the ACA as either A or B recommendations by the USPSTF or through HRSA um, as WPSI recommendations. Yes, and thank you, Amy, for that um, for that context. I did uh, try to um, put comments where there were was overlap in uh, the recommendations from WPSI and USPSTF. Um, there are several that um, do overlap that it, it's also, it, while it is a WPSI recommendation, it is also a USPSTF recommendation. I don't know that you can pull up the comments on uh, the PDF, but there, there are little comment um, bubbles next to those recommendations that do that I could find that overlapped. Um, and this is uh, from the best of, of my knowledge um, in, uh, in researching this. And so um, there may be some overlap that is not noted here. 
Yeah, and, and just for those that want to take a deeper dive, there's also a narrative with each of these recommendations, what is recommended for whom and at what time. And so the bubbles also indicate that if there's an open bubble, those are for certain populations, but the filled in bubble is that it is either an A, B recommendation or WPSI. So just so people can understand what that means, that um, the open circle sort of represents like a shared decision making or as appropriate and clinically indicated. And I did uh, just again want to point out, as Amy said, um, all of these recommendations, uh, I believe, are considered uh, prevented, preventative and um, are either USPSTF recommend A or B recommendations or um, uh, WPSI recommendations. And so to my knowledge, all of them would be required to be covered at no cost share. Any additional questions or feedback? Uh, Rick, I see your hand up. Uh, thanks, Brooke. Uh, Rick Blackwell, Pacific Source. Um, I, I appreciate this work because uh, I was trying to determine when reading 3391 and the, the charge to us being what, what guidelines are consistent with HRSA. I think this is helpful in understanding which of these are recommendations by a private body and which of these are actually been adopted by um, well, I, I guess that's a question. Is the Preventative Services Task Force and HRSA, are those the same? Like, I should know that by now, I think, but I'm not no, sure of that. Yeah. They're not. And, and also, I don't know if this is relevant or helpful to understand that recommendations as covered by the USPSTF are currently under scrutiny in a case in Texas, Braidwood versus Becerra, and those are sort of under threat. And because the WPSI recommendations are directly um, informing HRSA recommendations and are covered through HRSA, uh, those are kind of protected or they are protected. So it's a different pathway. The USPSTF is non-governmental um, and it's an elected number of uh, designated experts who sit on a non-partisan, non-governmental committee for a four-year term and review evidence as conducted, you know, systematic reviews for specific topics, and then they make recommendations. And anything that's recommended as an A or a B recommendation by the USPSTF is then adopted for coverage under the ACA. And that was um, part of the ACA for covering task force A and B recommendations, whereas the WPSI is a kind of a direct conduit to HRSA. And so that's a separate pathway. Well, so WPSI can make recommendations to HRSA, which then feed into the the A and B recommendations eventually adopted by. No, right? so so they're separate. The WPSI is separate from the USPSTF. So the nomenclature for A and B recommendations is only A, B, C, D, and I, meaning in, uh, insufficient evidence, are um, task force kind of nomenclature, whereas the WPSI is either they move it forward to HRSA as a proposed recommendation and HRSA decides to adopt it for coverage, but there's not a grading system. So I think my point would be here that we can't, 3391 is pretty clear that it's got to be guide published by HRSA. And so, um, you know, like I actually see, I think a, a number of other mandates within the insurance code that might apply here anyway. So it's not as if they aren't being covered, but I think just for the purposes of this exercise, um, the WPSI recommendations aren't necessarily adopted by HRSA. They're recommended to be adopted by HRSA. And so we just have to be careful which of these um, are to be covered by this particular rulemaking. Not saying that, not you know passing any judgment on whether these should be required or not. It's just that, we have kind of a particular charge here. Yeah, um, as as Rick pointed out, um, again, the underlying legislation is HB 3391, and that does, uh, it, it's very um, clear in that underlying legislation that um, it uh, requires health benefit plans to cover well women care um, consistent with guidelines published by the United States by HRSA. Um, and again, there are 13 currently um, WPSI guidelines that have been approved by HRSA. 
Um, part of the reason I uh, drafted two sets of rules um, currently, an option A and an option B, is because um, it, it's it's clear that um, the inclusion of this chart does go beyond the underlying legislation. Um, as I said previously, um, this chart does include uh, USPSTF recommendations that um, would be um, would need to be covered without cost sharing because um, of the of the ACA. And so I believe everything in this chart um, would be would need to be covered without cost sharing. Um, However, if we do go the route of including the chart into rule, um, that does exceed um, what is currently in that legislation. And I, and I hope that's clear. If there's any questions, um, please let me know. I can see some comments in the chat. Let me, I think Amy uh, put the link to the, um, the HRSA website, which does include those 13 recommendations on that website. And Amy is asking us if this is the 2024 chart. I believe so. I'm not entirely positive, so I will um, check that and let you know. Oh, this is the 2023 recommendations. Is there an updated chart, Amy? Yes, it was published, uh, let's see, the beginning of March. So there's a 2024 chart on the WPSI website. I can put the link in the chat. Thank you. And Antoinette, I see you have a question. Yes, hi, this is Antoinette from Cambia Health. Um, so that I, I understand. So you drafted two rules. <clears throat> Are you saying one of, of them includes the WIPC chart and one doesn't because of the fact that the WIPC chart exceeds the guidelines in House Bill 3391. Correct. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure. So now we have the option of either going with one or the other, right, as a rack. Correct, and, and okay. we will be reviewing both of those later and then during the, the feedback portion um, and during the rule review, um, any you know um, feedback that you have about which to adopt, um, uh, that would be the time to have those conversations. Okay. Rick? I, I have a, I, oh, oh, I'm go sorry. ahead, internet. So I have a follow-up question here. So if the ACA requires uh, coverage for the HRSA recommendations, as well as the those coming from the USPSTF um, recommendations, if we were to adopt the WIPC, that means that Oregon would have an additional list of services that we're required to cover beyond the ACA. I just want to make sure because the WIPC is just, these are just recommendations to the HRSA. The HRSA hasn't, they've approved it, but it's not HRSA's own recommendations. They've just kind of like uh, are recommending it, right, as part of the ACA. I guess I'm just a little bit confused as to how that goes. So the HRSA recommended WPSI guidelines are separate and distinct from the uh -huh. USPSTF yep, um, I know that. Mm -hmm. recommendations. Yep. Yep. Um, so the, the chart includes um, a more comprehensive view of what WPSI recommends for well women coverage. Mm -hmm. And that, that does include the 13 HRSA approved guidelines along with the USPSTF recommendations. And there are, I think, two recommendations from Bright futures on there. If we adopted the WPSI well women chart, I do not believe that would um, go beyond current mandates for coverage of preventative services, because again, um, the, everything listed on this chart is either considered a, a HRSA um, a supported WPSI uh, recommendation or um, it require, requires coverage under um, USPSTF um, task force um, for the A and B recommendations of the ACA. And so to my knowledge, everything on this chart would be required to be covered without cost sharing. So we wouldn't be exceeding um, what is currently required coverage. However, it would exceed um, the underlying legislation because Got again, okay. the underlying legislation points to only the um, HRSA supported guidelines, which, which again are the 13 that are in purpose in pink here. 
Okay. I hope that Thank helps. You. I know it's confusing. And Rick? Oh, um, yeah, I think just given that difference, it, it does seem like that maybe um, an exhibit could be added to this rule to clarify which of the services are covered by this particular rule. And then if there's further guidance about the remaining services and you know where they're covered as preventive or, or otherwise covered as a, a mandate under the insurance code, that probably clears it all up. It's complicated, but that's just kind of the legal environment we're dealing with here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Rick. So any other questions about um, the WPSI chart or the recommendations in general? Jason. We can't hear you, Jason. Are you? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. OK, great. Thanks. And I wanted to say thanks for letting me be part of this. Um, there was something I wanted to bring up now um, just because uh, from a coding perspective, I know we haven't jumped into the actual rules and coding yet, but um, when we look at the A and B um, outlines you sent to both of us, uh, to everybody, um, if we were to look at just the HRSA recommendations, uh, their chart is very, it's uh, it doesn't have very much coding guidance or regulation in it. And so it may be a possibility because those things are also on the WPSI chart that we may would want to include the coding guidelines from WPSI for those 13 things that are on the HS, HRSA um, guide. Um, so it may be something we have still have to use, still have to use some of the information from WPSI, even if we went with the option A instead. So that was just what I wanted to throw out there. Thank you, Jason. And again, that that coding guide is included in your um, in the meeting materials that I believe Lisa just resent to the rack. Um, and that yes, is. Any other questions or comments? Um, so uh, we will move on to reviewing the two sets of draft rules and Karen, if you can mm -hmm. pull up option A, um, I'd like to start with option A, which includes the complete WPSI chart. And again, um, this is a more comprehensive um, view or um, this would be a more comprehensive uh, view of well women care because it does include the, the whole WPSI chart. So if you can go back up to the top, mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to read it in its entirety. So um, we did change the effective date to August 1st uh, because it, it did take quite a while to um, reschedule this RAC meeting, and we likely uh, won't be able to have a hearing um, until, oh, I don't know, June or July, um, which would make the effective date August 1st. Um, so it says effective August 1st, health benefit plans, policies, or certificates issued, renewed, modified, or extended after uh, January 1st, 2019 uh, must provide coverage without cost sharing for comprehensive well women care services consistent with guidelines set forth by the United States Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, as of December 2022, and uh, the Women's Preventative Services uh, Guidelines published in 2023. And then for number one, um, the United States, or HRSA, supports the Women's Preventative Services WPSI Guidelines. Uh, we changed uh, clinical recommendations to guidelines um, because they are guidelines. Um, health benefit plans must provide coverage for well women preventative services as outlined in the 2023 WPSI well women chart, um, which is the chart we just reviewed. And there is a link um, included for where that chart is accessible. Uh, we likely will need, if we adopt this set of rules, we likely will need to change that link um, to somewhere on the DFR website because uh, that um, the WPSI chart is is updated quite frequently, I, I think, and uh, and we would need to keep the version control consistent. And then if you scroll down, Karen, I believe um, the other uh, changes were just to um, update the statutory authority uh, to the correct um, citation. So any questions, comments about? 
this version. Oh, Brooke, this is Antoinette. I have my uh, hands raised. Um, oh. So given that Dr. Cantor said there is the most recent version, which is 2024, do we really want to put the year in the rule or maybe refer to it as like the most recent published, something to that effect? I would love to do that in all of my rule sets. Unfortunately, I don't think we can say current um, uh, guidelines because then we would be delegating authority um, to another entity and uh, we do need to include um, the, the version uh, in the rule set. And so if we do choose to um, to uh, go with this set of rules, um, we can certainly look at the updated 2024 um, well women chart and determine whether or not um, that is the one that we want to include, but I would um, need to include the actual version in the set of rules. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's fine. But the thing is, if the 2024 uh, WIPC recommendations have additional recommendations also adopted by HRSA that it's not in this rule. I just don't want insurers to be held non-compliant if we're not covering those in the 2024 WIPSI um, chart. That that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, it, the version. I have not looked at the 2024 chart. I was not aware that it was published in, in March. Um, and so the version that is currently in this rule is the 2023 chart. Um, if if we, uh, when the rule is published, it will inc include the version of the chart and that will be the version that insurers will be held accountable to if this rule set is adopted. Does that make sense? Yeah, so in other words, you're saying that when this rule is adopted, it would reflect the 2024, we'll see. I think that's a conversation we need to have with the RAC and likely we need to look at that 2024 um, chart to determine where the differences are. Uh, I haven't done that yet. And so if this okay. is a, a version that people um, would like to move forward with, then we can have that conversation. Okay. <laughs> I Thank feel you. <laughs> yeah, it's just that you know we have this RIA market conduct exam. Yeah, so I just I just want to make sure <laughs> that we are actually um, that you know uh, insurers are not in the future are not going to be held to be non-compliant if we are we are relying on 2023, but then there's a most recent version, you know, of it. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. Yeah. Good. And I just want to make clear that, that you would not be held um, to a version that is not in the rule. So the current, I mean, the rule currently has the 2023 chart. Um, if it continues to have the 2023 chart in the rule, that is the version of the chart that you will be held Two, okay. and that is why we would put that chart on the DFR website instead okay. of the WPSI website so that we can maintain version control. So okay. that, so that any updates, you know, if there were updates that we wanted to adopt, um, mm -hmm. say this rule set um, becomes finalized and it includes the 2024 um, WPSI chart and in 2025, there's a new version, we would then need to update the rule to include the new version. You would not, insurers would not be held accountable to um, the most current one. It would be the one that is listed in the rule. Great, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Rick. Oh, uh, thanks again, Brooke. Um, I actually don't think that we have a, the choice to adopt this particular option. I think we have to adopt. Um, is it option A? I believe option B is the one that has the 13 HRSA recommendations. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we'd have to adopt option B. Um, and then if we do want to adopt, if we want to have some kind of chart for to refer to, I think DFR has to put that together so that um, so that we understand exactly like what the rule or what the statute authorizes and what the rule is telling us to do. Um, I don't think we can just adopt the WPSI chart wholesale because there may be some differences there. Yep. Thanks for that, Rick. 
Any other thoughts? Okay, let's review option B, um, which is the one that has the uh, 13 uh, recommendations from uh, HRSA. So um, it does say, again, effective August 1st, um, health benefit plans, um, certificates renewed, issued, renewed, modified, or extended after January 1st, 2019, must provide coverage without cost sharing for, and this is where the changes are, um, comprehensive well women care services consistent with guidelines set forth by the United States Health Resources and Services Administration, FERSA, as of December 2022. Um, and then uh, in one, all of the information about the WPSI um, guideline charts um, are removed and instead uh, it says health benefit plans must provide coverage without cost sharing for the 13 well women preventative services identified by HRSA. A list of these covered services can be found on the HRSA website and it includes a link. Again, we will likely need to update that to a, a, a DFR specific website that includes all of the 13 um, guidelines uh, for version control purposes. And I can, I'm gonna take control for a second, um, Karen, cause I want to show everyone the, um, uh, the HRSA website. So let me do that. Sure. Do you want me to do a stop share? Um, let me see if I, can people see now? Oh, there you go. Yes. Okay. So this is the, um, the Health Resources and Services Administration Women Preventative Services Guidelines website. It does include some background information um, on how these recommendations uh, were developed, including some background information on the WPSI. And then the um, 13 uh, supported guidelines are under this headline right here, HRSA Supported Women's Preventative Services Guidelines, and it does um, include uh, all of the 13 guidelines which are currently um, supported by HRSA. So again, those are uh, screening for urinary incontinence, uh, breast cancer screening for average risk, risk women, screening for anxiety, screening for cervical cancer, uh, screening and counseling for interpersonal and domestic violence, uh, obesity prevention in midlife women, breast feeding services and supplies, contraceptive contraception, counseling uh, for sexually transmitted infections, uh, HIV um, infection screening, um, well women at least one well women preventative visit per year, um, screening for diabetes in uh, pregnancy, and screening for diabetes after pregnancy. And there. I believe that Amy um, included a link um, to uh, that uh, site in the chat. I see some hands. Uh, let's start with Tara. And Karen, can you pull up the rule again just so we can see it while we're discussing? Yep. Hey, Brooke, I really appreciate your comments around kind of version control and making sure that we're all on the same page for which which version of these guidelines um, we're responsible for at a given time. It's so helpful to have that kind of notice and predictability as we're kind of putting together plans and pricing for those plans. Um, I wanted to see if you would be open to incorporating, um, I imagine within HRSA, a federal definition of screening within the rules so that it's really clear for us what is screening versus um, some other kind of diagnostic testing, for example. Uh, do you know if there is a, a federal definition of screening, Tara? I don't know. There is, yes, uh... there's, I've found, I've looked for them before, so I'm happy to, um, maybe we can write a comment and put some options in there for you. That would be great, thank you. Uh-huh. And Merlene. Hi, thank you. I just wanted to comment that, let me lower my hand here. Um, I wanted to comment that I um, agree with Rick that this version B is the one that we would need to go with because it is align, aligning with the underlying statute. I saw Amy's um, comment in uh, the chat about if it was limited, would that be at the exclusion of other preventive services? And 
from my perspective, we're required to fi follow federal law as well as state law, so it wouldn't change the services that we were um, covering. It would just be making the Oregon regulation align with the Oregon statute, and the carriers are still on the hook to follow all the federal stuff. Um, I just think it's um, a cleaner way of handling it. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I would agree. Um, I, regardless of which version we adopt, um, the USPSTF um, guidelines are still required to be covered under the ACA. And so insurers would need to continue to cover those um, as um, you know, recommended by uh, the ACA or as required by the ACA. Uh, any additional comments, thoughts, questions? Okay. So um, uh, now I think is the time for feedback and I would just like to hear from the rack. I've heard, I think um, from some members that uh, the option B is, uh, is preferred because it more closely aligns with the underlying statute. Um, I just want to hear any other feedback or opinions on which version of the rule set um, we should move forward with. Does anybody have any comments, thoughts, suggestions? Antoinette. Yeah, I put my uh, comments in the chat, but I want to verbally uh, voice that I do also support or Cambia also supports option B. Again, because it aligns with the underlying statute. <clears throat> Thank you, Antoinette. Scott? Uh, good morning, Scott White from Moda Health. Uh, just uh, we support option B as well for the aforementioned reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And I also wanted to add one more thing. I also do support what Providence Tara Harrison said about um, also including the definition of screening. I mean, this all ties into the uh, RIA market conduct examination we had um, in 2021 that is still ongoing. I think there is some confusion within the state or the division about what is a screening versus diagnostic. So I think including that definition in there will be very helpful going forward. <clears throat> Thank you, Antoinette. Any other comments, feedback, thoughts about either set of rules? Uh, Merlene. Um, Kaiser Permanente would also support um, the inclusion of a definition of screening versus diagnostic. It would provide great clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Others? I just put this in the chat, but can someone share the language around the screening definition? Uh, yes, I believe Tara said that she there was a federal definition that she was aware of. Um, Tara, if you have that, can you put it in the chat? And if you don't have access to it right now, um, I will uh, share it with the rack um, once you provide it to me. Yeah, I didn't I didn't bring it for the meeting, but I have pulled it in the past, so it shouldn't take too long to find. Okay. So I will share it with the um, rack members after the meeting. All right, um, Karen, if there's no other comments, feedback, Karen, do you mind pulling up the agenda again? Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, now is the time for public comment. Um, so I'd like to open the floor to public comment. If there's anybody who would like to provide public comment who is not a member of the RAC, um, go ahead and raise your hand and I will call on you. Jen. Hi, Jen Baker, Cigna Health, um, and I just wanted to reiterate uh, support for option B for all the reasons listed um, and also supporting Tara's uh, recommendation for the definition. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. 
Uh, any other members of the public would like to provide comment? Okay, so next steps. Uh, so if you have any feedback on either set of rules, um, please uh, provide me with uh, feedback by May 3rd. Um, that gives you, I think, a little over two weeks or about two weeks um, for any comment. Um, I will also uh, provide the definition of screening that um, Tara uh, sends to me out to the RAC. Um, I think that I'm not sure if we will need another RAC meeting. Uh, it sounds like if there are changes to the rule to include a definition of screening, we may need an additional RAC meeting. And so um, I will look for additional times and, and hopefully send that out to the group. Um, and uh, we will see if we need an additional RAC meeting. If not, we may be able to move to, to a hearing. Um, but again, we probably have some things we need to figure out first. I see a hand. Go ahead, Antoinette. Um, yeah, with respect to um, uh, the uh, written comments, um, are you looking for comments outside of what we've discussed? I mean, I think all of us on the RAG voiced our um, preference and it, with respect to with option we would prefer and also with the inclusion of the definition of screening. So are you looking for us to reiterate our support and our recommendations in writing, or are you looking for something outside of what we we discussed today? Uh, thanks. Anything um, outside of what we discussed today uh, that you would like to include? I do have noted the uh, request to include a definition of screening and uh, to move forward with option B. Um, and, and given the conversation that we've had at this RAC meeting, option B um, is likely what we will move forward with. Thanks so much for the clarification. Any other questions before uh, we end? Let's see, I'm seeing a comment. Okay, uh, Amy is suggesting a change, which would be in the second paragraph, which suggests um, 13 well women preventative services as recommended by or supported by um, HRSA. And yes, I, I, I agree that that should probably um, be clarified. And so uh, I will take a look at that. Thank you, Amy. All right, if there's nothing else, um, we can go ahead and end a little early. Um, thank you everyone for the discussion today. It's been really helpful. Um, and uh, I will um, send out the updated definition and um, potentials for another RAC meeting if necessary um, soon. Oh, Scott, go ahead before we end. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, Brooke. Um, oh, no problem. It looked like in chat that a lot of us still weren't getting the materials and a website was going to be set up. Can we be notified when that website is set up and a link to it just so we can grab those materials for our internal teams? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank Thanks, you. Brooke. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks.